Good afternoon, everyone. So today we will begin the class with reading the quote which is on the board. Right? So we'll read it together. Now he says, mathematics is the language in which God has written the universe. Hmm. Let me read it again. He says, mathematics is the language in which God has written the universe. Now, this famous quote was actually given by a very famous physicist, which was Galileo. And then when I read it, I interpreted something like this. Right? Suppose I want to study the universe. To be more precise, suppose I want to study a certain phenomena or a certain object of the universe. Let's say black holes. Right? I want to know whether the black holes that we have discovered, discover, whether it is rotating or non-rotating. Right? And obviously, I need to talk about it because thoughts are there and you need to articulate them. Now, the language that I'll use to describe the rotation of the black hole, that would not be English, obviously. That would be mathematics. In fact, if I want to talk about any phenomena of the world or the universe or the nature, whatever you want to call it, I think we need the formal language of mathematics. That is why mathematics is so important because you need to talk about things. And this is the only formal language which is sort of consistent and sort of complete. Right? Okay. Now you will say, ma'am, okay, the first language that we studied was actually not mathematics, it was English. In fact, let me try to draw out comparison between the first language that we learned, which was English, and mathematics. Right? Okay, so let's talk about it. English and math. Alright, so it's the very first day of your school and you have come for the class. What did you learn in English? Obviously, we talked about the alphabet ABC. Right? So we learned about the alphabet. Now, corresponding to that, what do you think is going to be the analog of this in math? The very first thing that you learn in math is are the digits basically 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So the digits are the analog. Next sentence. Right? Let's come back to this now. Alphabet. When I join some alphabet, probably I'll get a word. Right? The second thing that we learned that was a word. Right? The word. Now, if I combine certain digits, obviously I'm going to get numbers. Right? Now, you will say, afterwards, ma'am, we went on to sentences. But, let's stop here. Uh, yes, we learned sentences, but before that, we learned different kinds of words. Right? Suppose, uh, we learned the word Albert Einstein. We understand the word Albert Einstein is completely different from the word table. Right? Because that word refers to a specific person. And table, I might refer to this table or that table or that table. It's a collection of objects, right? Because there's too many things that are called tables. And obviously there is just one Albert Einstein. So you see, we learn about different types of words. In fact, we learn about the words which we gave to the objects. Which were known by nouns. Right? So I'm specifically just going to talk about three kind of nouns. I know they are more. But I am just going to talk about the three ones. Three main ones. So proper noun. Then there was common noun. And then there was abstract noun. Right? Just think about the analog of each of these in mathematics. Now proper nouns. That means they refer to a certain thing. Now what can be the analog in mathematics? A thing which I know it means this only. Clear number. If I say the number 1001, you know about number 1001. There is only one number which is 1001. I might use it in different ways. Yes, I know. But you understand when I say 1001, it is 1001 itself. Refer to the number itself. So analog of proper noun would be real number. Alright. So far so good. Now let's talk about common noun. Now, I took the example of the word table, right? So, any table, any object which is, seems rectangular, has four legs, will be called a table, right? I know there are different kind of tables, bear with me, right? 
So basically, a collection law of objects which satisfy a given condition. That is common noun, right? Table, four legs, it should hold things. That is called a table. Now, in mathematics, what will that be? Now, a collection of things which satisfy a given property. Collection of things. Okay, things in number that would be numbers. Things in mathematics would be numbers, right? So let me talk about three, six, nine, and so on. Collection of numbers. Why? Because I have taken to many numbers and put it here, right? Collection. Three, six, nine. They satisfy a very specific property, which is that they are multiples of things. So collection of numbers actually would be equivalent to common number. All right. Now the last and the interesting one that is abstract noun. First of all, just think about some example of abstract noun in your mind. I'll just take a very single example over here, singular, which is the word any. Right. I can say that any number is either prime or is either even or odd. Or I can say any number is either prime or composite. Or it is number one, right? So the word any does it refer to something specific? Any number is either even or odd, right? Now in some context, I might refer to number six, I might refer to number thirteen, or I might refer to one lakh three thousand and two, right? So it doesn't refer to something specific, but it is a little bit arbitrary in nature. Right, that sort of arbitrariness. Where do you find that in math? Obviously, arbitrariness, arbitrariness there, abstraction is there. So that means I am talking about the thing. Take the example of x. Right, in some question it may refer to number of students. In some question it may refer to number of triangles. So it depending on the context, variable takes its reference. The same as with the case of abstract numbers. All right. Okay. Now we have talked about nouns. Basically, that is like sort of objects itself. Now, since objects are there, we need some sort of action between them, right? Those words are actually words, which provide action. In mathematics, what provide action? That does something to other things. Operators, right? You add things, you multiply things, subtract them, divide them. That is, that are operators. So corresponding to verb, I have operators, and I should write this a little bit finally. Operators, right? I am not talking about the other kind of words over here because uh, it doesn't solve our problem. I think this is it for me. So I have some noun, I have some object, I have I have made that object do something with the help of words. If I combine all of these, I am going to get a sentence. Right? Okay. Now I have real numbers. I have collection of real numbers. I have variable. I have operators. If I combine all of them, I will get an algebraic expression. Right? Because I have numbers. I have variables. I have the plus and minus sign in between. Right? In fact, today we are going to talk about algebraic expression only. But before we move on to that, I just want to emphasize, like. The analogy between sentence and algebraic expression. You need sentences to convey your meaning in English. You need algebraic expression to convey your meaning in mathematics. In fact, today we are going to learn about a very special kind of algebraic expression. Those are called polynomials. Then that in class nine, absolutely fine, right? Now polynomials are those algebraic expressions. They are. Because it will have some variable, and variable would have some exponents, right? Where well, the exponents of variables are columns, are columns, right? And we will move on to this. Before we move on to the next part, I just want to emphasize how polynomials came into being. These are mathematical sentences, right? So very important. And very apt to learn about the history of them. All right. All right. Now, as you can see, I have written some algebraic expressions on the board. You need to identify which one of them are polynomials. 
basically you need to check whether the exponent of the variable is a whole number or not right so let's start so here obviously exponent of x over here is 2 which is a whole number then 1 then here i cannot see x but i can write this as x is part 0 whole number whole number whole number it is a polynomial answer is yes in this way you can check it out so again whole 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 so yes it is a polynomial now here x is so one whole number but i have one by x over here one by x the power of x in this one is minus one minus one is not a whole number that is why this is not a polynomial right again x is so one x is so zero whole number so that means yes it is a polynomial now x is so four whole number here it is root x in fact square root x that means x is so one by two now one by two is not a whole number Since the exponent is not a whole number, it is not a polynomial, right? Okay, x is five two one zero. It is a polynomial. Now, p plus root five, right? So say x is not here. I can write this as into x is zero, right? This is a whole number. That means this is a polynomial. In fact, this is nothing but a constant polynomial. All right. Next. X is for two by three. Now two by three is definitely not a whole number. Not a whole number. Not a polynomial. Zero. All right. Now zero is definitely a polynomial. You already know it. That is called zero polynomial. So yes, it is a polynomial. Right. Now uh, three, two, zero. So that means yes, it is a polynomial. In fact, I should not say three because we'll come to that. And here I have four, two, then zero. Yes, it is a polynomial. Now we have identified certain polynomials, right? Now suppose I want to classify them. Once you know something, you want to divide them into some categories. That is called classification. So let me talk about some sort of classification over here. So if you look at the coefficients, five, seven, two, right? Five, seven, two, definitely they are natural numbers. Yes, they are integers as well. But I am going to the better collection over here. These are definitely natural numbers. That means this is a polynomial over the collection of natural numbers, right? If I say polynomial over the collection of natural numbers, you can say the coefficients are natural numbers, and you can make use of it, right? Again, four minus three, five and one. Now, what sort of coefficients are there? Definitely integers. So I would say this is a polynomial over the collection of integers. Right? Okay, this is not a polynomial, so I do not care. Okay, this is cut it out. This is obviously minus nine by two, thirteen by five. Now these are rational numbers, so that means this is a polynomial over rational numbers. Right? Not a polynomial. I do not care. Then root two, which is a irrational number six, which is a natural number. Then minus seven, then two root. Since rational, irrational, both are getting involved, I would say this is a polynomial over real numbers. Again, this is a polynomial over real numbers, right? Because here, the irrational terms are getting involved, so over real numbers. I do not care about them. Now, obviously, this is what I can write this as x raised to zero. Or in fact, I should not. Uh, it can be a coefficient of whatever the power of x is, right? It is zero. So I would say this is a polynomial over the collection of whole numbers, right? Again, hmm, I mean, we do not care about zero, but pi minus six, I would say over the collection of integers. Then next would be over the collection of rational numbers. So in this way, we can classify polynomials on the basis of the coefficients. Whether they are natural numbers, whether they are integers, whether they are real numbers, or whether they are whole numbers, right? So you can classify the polynomials like this. There is another way of classification as well, which I think you already know. That is on the basis of degree, degree of the polynomial. So degree of the polynomial is very important. We will make note of that. Degree of the polynomial. First of all, how do I find the degree of the polynomial? It is just the highest power of the variable, right? Just look for the highest one that will give me the degree. Here the highest one is obviously two, so that means the degree is two. When the degree is two, that we call a polynomial. The, that polynomial is quadratic polynomial. We have a name for it, right? Degree is three. That means this is a cubic polynomial. 
Degree is one. That means this is a linear polynomial. Degree is four. Okay, this was not a polynomial. This is linear. Right. Degree is five. This is a quintic polynomial. I think you already know this. Now, this is a constant polynomial. Right. This is the zero polynomial. You already know it. Now, degree of this polynomial. Can you say that that is three? Careful. Yes, you have to take the highest part of the variable, but you have to make sure that the coefficient is not zero. So this term is technically not there, right? So here the highest part is two. That means again this is a quadratic polynomial, right? Next is part degree is four, so that means it is a bi-quadratic polynomial. Degree two is quadratic. Four one is obviously bi, twice four, so bi-quadratic, right? Polynomial of degree six, seven, eight—they do not have special names. We stop at usually quintic, and then you can just say polynomial of degree thirty. No special name, right? So we can classify the polynomials on the basis of degree also. All right. Now let's move on to operations on polynomials. All right. Like I said, now we'll be doing operations on polynomials. If two polynomials are there, you can definitely add them, right? In fact, I want you to stop the video. Take only 30 seconds to add them up. Please do not take more than that. But I'll discuss with a solution straight away. But you pause the video and do it in 30 seconds. All right? If I want to add this polynomial and this polynomial, I know I need to add the like sum. Now, x cube is here. X cube is not there. That means in my sum, two x cube would be there. Plus. Now let's see. X square, x square. That means these two coefficients will be added. So seven by three plus seven by two. X square. Now x is here, x is not there, so minus root two x plus seven plus root five. Right. This is a constant term. That is why I am putting it in brackets. And this you can easily find out. This turns out to be thirty-five by six. I obviously I will not be discussing how we calculate it. That I am leaving that up to you. Right on the next one, and the polynomial pi minus root two into x square plus root seven plus root three into x minus seventy three and one by pi plus root two into x square plus root seven minus root three into x plus two hundred and twelve. Mind it, take thirty seconds. And let's see whether your answer matches with mine or not, because it will be a little bit shameful if you cannot add two polynomials. Right. I think we will discuss it now. Now x square is there, x square is there. But before that, I have a irrational term in the denominator. Not a big part. So let me rationalize it. That means I will multiply by pi minus root two and divide by pi minus root two. So in the numerator, I will have pi minus root two. And in denominator, I'll get a square minus b square, so that means pi square minus root two square, which is twenty three. Right? Now this is the coefficient of my x square. Now x square here, x square here. You can see pi minus root two is common. Obviously, x square is there. And here I am left with one, and there I am left with one by twenty three. Right? And obviously, this is nothing but twenty four by twenty three. Done. Okay. X. X is here. X is there. Root seven plus root three. Root seven minus root three. Root three term cancels, so I'll get plus two root seven x. Then minus seventy three plus two hundred and twelve, which is one thirty nine. Check whether you have the answer. If you did not, then that's a problem. So careful. Next, simplify. Simplify. Three x cube minus five by three x plus root two. Minus two x square minus three x plus one by three plus eleven by three x cube minus two two x square minus one. Simplify it and get the correct answer in first go itself. All right, I think sufficient time. You can pause the video and do it. Now, obviously, if I need to proceed, first of all, negative sign is there and bracket is there. So make sure that you open the bracket correctly. So I'll open this up. Sign will change plus minus. Happy? Now I proceed. Let me remove the bracket. Let me remove the bracket. All right. 
Now, x cube is here, x cube is there. So that means 3 plus 1, 11 by 3, which will be 20 by 3, x cube. Now, x square down right there, so minus root 2 x square. Then, minus 5 by 3 x plus 3 x. From the x nine is perfect. Minus 5 by 3 plus 3, so that is plus 4 by 3 x. Then, I have, okay, that was 1, just 1. Right? Then, I have plus root 2. Then, I have minus 1 by 3, minus 1, minus 4 by 3. Again, to one constant top. So let me check whether my answer is correct or not. All right. Oh, we did one error here. 2x squared was here and we forgot to write it. So minus 2x squared here. So this would be minus common 2 plus root 2x squared. Right. So if you hurry it up, it's fine. But make sure you do not leave any other term the way I just said. So get what? Right. Now, if I ask you, in this polynomial that I have written, what is the coefficient of x squared? The coefficient of x squared, that would be minus 2 and minus root 2. Right. If I ask you, what is the coefficient of x raised to 4? The coefficient would be 0. Because x raised to 4 is not there, I can write it as 0 into x raised to 4. Alright. Just point to be noted. Now, we have done uh, addition, subtraction. Let me multiply some polynomials. The first one, x square minus 2x plus 3 into x cube minus 22x plus 2. Let's see whether you can do this correctly or not. Alright, I think sufficient time. In this, obviously, we will apply the distributive property. I will consider this as single term and these as my integer term. So, x square will be multiplied by that. x cube minus 22x plus 2. Then, minus 2x multiplied by x cube minus 22x plus 2 plus 3 into x cube minus 22x plus 2. If you can do it directly, perfect. But you have to make sure that there is no error. So, I will open this up. x raised to 5 minus 22x cube plus 2x square. Then minus 2x raised to 4 plus 44x squared minus 4x plus 3x cubed minus 66x plus 6. I'm hoping that you can multiply. Alright, so that is x raised to 5 is going to be lonely, so done. Now x raised to 4 is the only one, so minus 2x raised to 4, done. x cubed minus 22 plus 3, that's the only one, right? So minus 19x cubed. Then x squared, so 2. 44, that's it. So, plus 46 x squared. Then, minus 4, minus 66, minus 78, plus 6. Check if you have the answer or not. Let me also check whether I have committed an error. No, perfect, perfect. You can multiply as far as space, absolutely fine. Right on the next one. Root 5 x squared minus 3 x plus root 7 into root 5 x squared plus 3 x plus at the first place. Alright, I think sufficient time. Now, one method is you can consider this as one term. Then you will multiply root 5 x square by this. Then minus 3 x into this plus root 7 into this. Right? Or you can just look at the terms. The terms are quite similar to each other. In fact, if you look at this, root 7 x squared plus root, root 5 x squared plus root 7, root 5 x squared plus root 7. Same term is coming, right? So let me rewrite this. Root 5 x squared plus root 7 minus 3 x into root 5 x squared plus root 7 plus 3 x. So, so a minus b into a plus b. Which is a square minus b squared. So a in this case is root 5 x square plus root 7 whole square minus 3x whole square. Now, a plus b whole square you already know, so that will be 5 x raised to 4 plus 2 into this into this, so that is 2 root 35 x square plus 7 minus 9 x square. Just combine these two and you will get the answer. Right? Next one. Right? A monic polynomial, a monic polynomial 
of degree 4 and coefficient of x is 3 plus root 2. Now the thing with mathematicians is because they study too much our imagination is dull. So write the polynomial as imaginatively as you can. I don't know whether that's the word but you get my sentiment. Alright. Okay. Now first of all you say they do not know the meaning of monic. Now monic means any polynomial whose leading coefficient is 1. Alright. Done. Now leading coefficient is 1 and degree is 4. So that means x is 4 has to be there. Right, then here there is coefficient of x. So, I do not know anything about x cube or x square. So, let me take 3x cube minus 2x square. Now, for the coefficient of x, you say plus, it has to be 3 plus root 2. So, this is x. Constant term might be there, might not be there. So, let me write minus 5. Or constant term. I can take a rational number. Alright, next, write. Write. Two polynomials of degree 51 whose sum is a polynomial polynomial of degree 3. You need to write two polynomials now of degree x raised power 50, of degree 51. So x raised power 51 has to be there. Maybe I can have two x raised power 51. Then x raised power 51 has to be there. But mind it, sum should be a polynomial of degree 3. Then that means if I add these two, this term should get cancelled. So that means if the coefficient here is 2, here the coefficient has to be minus 2. Right? Now, you say now maybe there is an x raised plus 50 term. So I can say plus 100 x raised plus 50. But I have to add them up and the degree should be 3. That means this term should also cancel. So if it is plus 100, it should be minus. Right? You can write in between. I do not care. If you write it, then you have to make sure that the coefficients are negative of each other. Then he says some degree 3, so that means plus 7x cube. Right? So I can have plus 2x cube. There might be an x squared term. Whatever you want to write it, I'll write constant for plus 1, minus 3. If I add them up, obviously it would be a cubic polynomial. Next. Write. Three polynomials of degree seven, whose sum is a constant polynomial. Sum is a constant polynomial. As creatively as you can, please. Write three polynomials of degree seven. So that means x raised plus seven, x raised plus seven, x raised plus seven has to be there. Now sum is a constant polynomial. That means these terms should cancel. Right, so what I can do is I can put uh, uh, 3 over here, 2 over here and minus 5 over there. Right, if I add them up, obviously these terms will get cancelled. Right, now you say constant polynomial, so let me just write constant only. So plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. You can write the other terms also, but make sure that they cancel each other out. Alright, next. Now next is a very interesting question. You have to be a little bit careful. Right, write on the next one. There are two polynomials, two polynomials of degree m and degree n respectively. Right? What will be the degree? What will be the degree of their sum? Of their sum. Come on. Now I would want you to stop the video and analyze it yourself and then look at the solution. But I will discuss it straight forward. Now he says two polynomials are degree n and degree n. Now these are variables, right? It is hard to deal with variables when I am not able to imagine it properly. So what I can do is I can take some examples and study it. Right? So let me take my first polynomial to be x cube plus x square minus 2x plus 3. Right? The other polynomial that I need to take, maybe I can have x raised power 4 plus 1. Right? Now, if I add these two up, the degree of the sum would be 4. Huh. Okay, fine. Now, again I take the same uh, polynomial here. 
If I take my polynomial to be, the other polynomial to be x plus z. If I add these two up, my degree would be 3. So mind it whether this is bigger or this is bigger. Whether this is bigger or this one. That will make in the sum. That means I need to compare between these two numbers. Now two numbers are there, right? Either one will be greater than the other. Either m would be greater than n. Or m would be less than n. Is there any other case? There might be a case when these two are equal. Right? Two numbers can be compared in just three cases. Either greater, lesser or equal. Right? So let me just analyze the first one. M is greater than N. So from, suppose I have M over here and N over here. Now here, if M is greater, okay. M is greater, that means I'm talking about this case first. M is greater than N, the degree is M. Right? It is 6. Makes sense. The degree of sum is M. Second, when M is less than N, now 3 is less than 4. The degree is the higher one, so that means that is 4, but in this case, which is n. So here it is n. Right? Now comes the interesting part, then they are equal. So let me write it. So x cube plus x square minus 2x plus 3. Then the other one, maybe I can take x cube plus 3. If I add these two up, right, the degree would be 3. Okay, that means here the degree is 3, here the degree is 3, here the degree is 3. That means when m is equal to n, the degree might be m. Or you can write n, those are equal, it's absolutely fine. Right? Okay, fine. Let me take some other cases as well. So let me take this polynomial as it is. I'll take the other polynomial, minus x cube plus x square um, plus 1. If I add these two up, now I have made sure that the cubic term that is cancelled, right? Now the degree is what? 2. Okay. Right? So that means, even though the degree is 3, 3, m is equal to n, the degree is less by 1. That means, m minus 1 also comes. Right? Okay, fine, fine. Or, then, what I can do is, I can think of another one. So, x cube plus x square minus 2x plus 3. The other polynomial, minus x cube. Now, first I take the negative of x cube, oh, x cube term, then I take the negative of x square also. So, minus x square. That means these two terms will get cancelled and I can say plus x. In this case, the degree is 1. Right? Okay, then n minus 2. Okay, cool. Then what, you know what the next case would be? x cube plus x square minus 2x plus 3. I can say minus x cube minus, minus x square plus 2x plus 1. If you add these two up, you are getting a constant. Now, degree of a constant polynomial is 0. Right? So that means I can go from m, I can get to m minus 1, then m minus 2, and so on to 0 because I can get a constant as well. Right? So if I want to write this, I can say the degree is either m or less than m. Degree is less than or equal to m. But do you think I have exhausted all the cases? There is one last case which is less. If I take one polynomial to be x cube minus x square minus 2x plus 3, the other polynomial minus x cube minus x square plus 2x minus 3. The negative of this polynomial, right? If I add these two up, the answer is 0. Mind it, then the answer is 0. That means that is a 0 polynomial. And the degree of 0 polynomial is not defined. A very important point. Degree of 0 polynomial is not defined. So that is also one case of degree is not defined. If you have written all of these cases and all of these degrees, then only the answer is complete. If you have left even a single point, that means you have not analyzed it correctly. Alright? Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Now, there are two polynomials of degree m and degree n respectively. What will be the degree of their products? Now I am talking about the products. Come on. I think sufficient time. Now the thing is, some of you might have made the three guesses. And I would say why. Now he says, 
I need to find the degree of their product. Right? So whatever the case may be, x raised by m is there and whatever the numbers are, I do not care. Right? Then x raised by m is there, whatever the other numbers are, I do not care. If I am having the product, this is the largest term, this is the largest term, right? Largest term in the sense, highest part. Right? If I multiply these two, definitely x raised by m plus m plus m. No matter whether this is greater, whether this is smaller, whether these two are equal, in all the cases, the first term would be x raised by m plus m. And this would be the highest part anyway. Since this is the highest part, that means the degree is m plus m. There is no need for the cases, there is no need for analysis in this case. So it depends on the question, on the requirement of the question. Alright? Don't do it blindly. Okay, next. Write down. Write down a polynomial of degree 4. Leading coefficient is 2 plus 2 is 3. And sum of the coefficients is 0. As creatively as you can because it's very fun to write the polynomial. Alright, I think sufficient time. Now he says polynomial of degree 4, x raised to 4 term is here. Leading term is 2 plus 2 3. Right? Now, sum of coefficients is 0. Right? So maybe my x square term has minus 2 in it. Then my x term has minus 2 3 in it. And my constant term is 0. Right? Sum of the coefficients is 0. One answer. Obviously, they can be multiple ones. Next one. Write down. Write down all polynomials, all polynomials of the form a square plus bx plus c. Leading coefficient is 3. b plus c is 5. Where obviously a, b, c are natural numbers. Alright, I think sufficient time anyway. So let's write the polynomial. Now he says the polynomial is of this form. Leading coefficient is 3. Leading coefficient is 3. That means a is 3. So my polynomial looks something like this. 3x square plus bx plus c. Now he says that b plus c is 5 and b and c are natural numbers. So sum of two natural numbers is 5. There are hardly any guesses. So 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, 1. First case, when b is 1, c is 4. My polynomial looks something like this. 3x square plus x plus 4. Second, 3x square plus 2x plus 3. Third, 3x square plus 3x plus 2. Plus 3x square plus 4x plus 1. These are the only four polynomials which are possible. Next, find, find the number of polynomials now. Just the number. Number of polynomials of the form ax square plus bx plus c, where a belongs to the collection 1, 2, 3, 4. I said collection, not said that I, that is I am not put the curly one, but you get my emotion. B belongs to the collection 7, 14, 21. No, actually, I'll write. Seems weird. C belongs to the collection 9, 18, 27, 36 and 45. Find the number of polynomials of this form where A belongs to this, B belongs to this, C belongs to this. You just need to write the number. Alright, I think, I think sufficient time. If I want to write the number of polynomials, let me just see what sort of polynomials will I get. Right? Now he says that A belongs to this collection. So that means A can be 1. So let me take A as 1. Right? And let me write the polynomial. Now A is 1, so that means x squared term is there. Right? Up. B belongs to this collection, that means B can be 7, 14, 21. So let me take B as 7. So plus B as 7, so 7x seven plus. Now C can be either of these, so it can be 9. That is one polynomial. It can be 18, another polynomial, 27, another, 36, another, 45, another. Right? These are the 5 polynomials that I am getting. When A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 7. 
Now if I put A as one cell, but instead of cell, I am taking B as 40. Right? Again you will get X squared plus 40. Right? Then you can take C as 9, then 18, then 27, then 36, then 45. Again you have 5 polynomials. Again, A is 1, B instead of 7, 14, let me take it to be 21. My polynomial looks like x square plus 21x, plus 9, plus 18, plus 27, plus 36, plus 45. That is 5 nth number. Right? That means when A is equal to 1, the total number of polynomials I am getting, 5 plus 5 plus 5, that is 15. Now, when A is equal to 2, how many polynomials do you think you get? 15. Then 3, 15. 4, 15. In total, how many polynomials am I getting? 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15. That means 60 polynomials. Which is the answer. Yes, there are different ways of doing that. But since this is class 10, I do not want to use certain things. But I want to point out one thing. Right? Now, corresponding to each choice of A over here, I have 15 choices. Corresponding to one choice, I have 15 choices. For the four choices, for the four choices, I will get the answer as 4 into 15. You could have done it like this also. Also, <clears throat> there are other ways that you can employ, it's absolutely fine. Next one. Write down. Consider the polynomial. Consider the polynomial x squared plus bx plus c. Where b belongs to the collection 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. C belongs to the collection 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And B square is greater than 4, 6. Find the number of such polynomials. Now, thing is, now your method will not work. You need to actually count it. Come on. Correctly count the number of polynomials. Right. I think sufficient time. Now, my polynomial looks like this. B can either be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or and C can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this condition needs to be satisfied. Right. So, let me take the possible value of B. When B is 1, that means 1 square, which is 1, should be greater than 4. So, corresponding to this, you think you can put C as 1? 1 is greater than 4. Of course not. Can you put C as 2? 1 greater than 8. Of course not. See? No. In fact, when B is equal to 1, you will not get you will not get any value of C. Okay. So 1 is done. When B is 2, I can have uh, 2 squared greater than 4C. So 4 greater than 4C. Right? Okay. Do you think you can put C as 1? Absolutely not. 4 greater than 4 is wrong. 2? No. In fact, from this also you will not get anything. Next. When B is 3. That means 3 square which is 9. 9 greater than 4. Now see, can it be 1? Answer is yes. Because 9 is greater than 4. Can it be 2? 9 is greater than 8. Fine. Can it be 3? 9 greater than 12. Absolutely not. So just 2 values of C is there. Okay. That means when B is 3, C is equal to 1. will give you 1 polynomial. When B is 3, C is equal to 2. will give you another polynomial. So 2 polynomials you are getting. Now B is equal to 4. So, 4 square is 16. 16 greater than 4. Can I put 3 as 1? Yes. 16 greater than 4. 2? Yes. 3? Yes. 16 is greater than 12. Can I put it 4? 16 greater than 16. Absolutely not. From here, I will get another 3 polynomial. Then, P as 5. So, 5 that is 25 greater than 4. See? Can I put C as 1? Yes. 2? Yes. 3? Yes. 4? Yes. 5, yes, 25 greater than 20. And 6, yes, 25 greater than 24. You get 6 polynomials. Next, B is equal to C. That means 36 greater than 4C. You can have C as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? Okay? From here again you will get 6 polynomials. So in total you are getting 2 plus 3 plus 6 plus 6, which gives you 17 polynomials. Alright, the next one. Write down. Write, write all polynomials 
of the form 2a square minus 3b square into x square plus x plus plus 2b square minus a square minus 1. Well, a, b, c are natural numbers and sum of all coefficients, sum of all coefficients is 1, 0, 5. Pause the video and then move forward. I will discuss it. Now he says, right, people find you series. Write all polynomials of this form. Right? Where A and B belongs to natural numbers. And sum of all coefficients is this. Now, coefficient of x squared is this. So 2a squared is that. 2a squared minus 3b squared. Plus. Coefficient of x is 1. So plus 1. Plus. This is a constant term. Coefficient of x is 0. So 2b squared minus a squared minus 1. This sum, k says, is equal to 1, 0, 5. Right? So, this is a square, right? Minus b square. This gets cancelled. So, this is 1, 0, 5. Now, mind it, a and b are natural numbers. And a square minus b square is equal to 1, 0, 5. What you can do is, difference of two numbers is 1, 0, 5. That means you can write the square. The thing is, you will realize that the difference of two consecutive squares when it comes up to be 1, 0, 5, you have covered a lot of squares. Right? So, we might want to go for a shorter one. Now, look, a square minus b square. And what is our position? a plus b and a minus This is equal to 1, 0, 5. Mind it, since a and b are natural numbers, that means a plus b would be a natural number and a minus b would be a natural number. Right? Product of two natural numbers is 1, 0, 5. You can write 1, 0, 5 as a product of two natural numbers. No, not a big deal. So, first I can write as 1, 0, 5 into 1. Mind it, a plus b. Some of two natural numbers would be greater than the difference of two natural numbers. That is why I will put the bigger one over here. Right? The next one would be uh, 35 into 3. Right? Next one would be uh, 21 into 5. Then 15 into 10. Then next one would be 7 into 15. But, but, some of two natural numbers 7 and difference is 15. That is why I will not take this one. Also, I will not take 5 into 21. Also, I will not take 3 into 35. Also, I will not take 1 into 105. These are the only four cases from which I might get the solution. So, let me check the first case. First case, a plus b is equal to 105 and a minus b is equal to 1. Just add them up, you will get 2a is equal to 106. So, that means a is equal to 53. When a is equal to 53, put it here, you will get b as 52. One solution. In fact, when I said write all the polynomials, you have the value of A, you have the value of B, put it here, write your polynomials, then only your answer would be correct. Second case, this one. So A plus B is equal to 35. A minus B is equal to 3. Add them up, 2A is equal to 38. So that means A is equal to 19. A is equal to 19, put it here, B is equal to 16. Put a is equal to 19 and b is equal to 16 in this one and get the second polynomial. Right? Third, a plus b is 21. a minus b is 5. 2a is equal to 26. That means a is equal to 30. And b is equal to 8. Put it there, get the third polynomial. Then last one, a plus b is equal to 15. And a minus b is equal to 7. At the moment, a will turn out to be 11 and b will turn out to be 4. Right? Again, put this in this, you will get the fourth polynomial. So, you are getting 1, 2, 3, 4. The question wasn't writing the polynomial, so you need to put it and get those polynomials. I am not doing it because this is the calculation part. I am sure you can do it on your own. Right? So, with this, we will end the lecture and uh, I will see you next time. Thank you.